Hello YouTube, welcome back to another lesson on biology and geology. Today let's talk about human beings, the last part of the unit number six, the vertebrate animals. So human beings, we are human beings and we are uh, vertebrate animals. More precisely, human beings are placental mammals. Here in this image you can see uh, two human beings with one of the most recognizable characteristics that is to that we can for example use tools very precisely um, for example we, we can create fire and, and these kind of technologies are they have been developed by human beings and the that's something that most animals can do. So here you can see an image of a tribe, the Bushmen, los Bosquimanos, that they still have, a, they live as um, hunter and gatherers, right? The, los Bosquimanos son una tribu que um, conserva de alguna manera sus tradiciones y su forma de vida recolectora cazadora. Okay, so let's see what are the main characteristics of human beings. Human beings, as I said, are placental mammals and they belong to the order of primates. The primates is a group that include monkeys and apes. So first of all we are going to see the characteristics of, of this order and then we will see some special features that human beings have that make us a little bit different than the rest of the primates. So what are the main characteristics of primates? Well they have body hair. Most mammals have uh, body hair. They have mammary glands on the chest instead of the belly area, the abdomen, that most uh, mammals um, have. For example, dogs and cows, they have the mammary glands uh, at the abdomen. But Primates, we have mammary glands on the chest. Okay, so another feature which is very important is that they have eyes facing front. They have both eyes in the face. They don't have eyes in uh, at the size of the head. Uh, for example, birds or some reptiles, they have mm, the eyes on the sides. But um, primates and some um, other mammals, usually um, predators, they have both eyes in the same plane at the face. And that is important because this position allows them to see in three dimensions. Binocular um, view. Los primates tenemos los ojos, los dos ojos en el mismo plano en la cara y no los tenemos a los lados como otros animales. Y eso nos permite ver en tres dimensiones. Eh, nos permite tener esa visión binocular o estereoscópica que nos permite ver en profundidad y calcular distancias. Y eso es muy típico también de otros animales mamíferos cazadores. Mm, what else? They have four limbs with hands. ¿Ok? So primates, they have four limbs, arms and, and legs, and they have hands uh, in, in these limbs. Also, another important feature is that the joints in the arms have the ability of um, rotational movement. Tienen, tienen, nuestras articulaciones de los brazos pueden moverse en, en círculo. Uh, and that's that's quite important. 
Also, they have opposable thumb. Tienen un pulgar oponible. That, allow, that allows the primates to grab uh, things. Tienen un pulgar oponible en las manos y en los pies que les permite agarrar cosas. Also, they have a highly developed brain. Eh, tienen un cerebro muy desarrollado y son bastante inteligentes. Also, they have fewer offspring and more time to carry for them. Eh, tienen pocas crías en general y cuando nacen, pues son... Mmm, dependen mucho de la madre y tienen un periodo de, en el que tienen que estar muy cuidados. Ese periodo es muy largo cuando son, cuando son bebés, cuando son crías. This is the classification of the order primates. Here you have their order primates and then you have different taxonomic categories and you can see that we have two main branches. One of these branches are lemurs. Lemurs uh, are mm, very like very strange primates, very different from the rest of them. Then we have this group like lemurs and then we have anthropoidea anthropoidea within anthropoidea we can separate two branches the orange one which are the uh, monkeys okay monkeys are these uh, primates with long tail um, that they are similar for example like uh, they are the monkey of the Pirates of the Caribbean, do you remember? El mono capuchino de Piratas del Caribe. These kind of animals that they are called monkeys from the new uh, world. Los, los primates de... los monos del, del nuevo mundo. Uh, they, they, they are this, this group. And then we have the apes. The apes are the blue lines. And they belong to the group uh, or superfamily Hominidae. Here we can find like the closest uh, animals to the human beings. Los uh, parientes más próximos a los seres humanos, que son la familia uh, Hominidae. And, they, and here you can see the apes, which are Pongo, uh, which are orangutans, uh, gorillas. Then we have Pan, the genus Pan, are bonobos and chimpanzees. And then we have uh, the genus Homo, which uh, we are Homo sapiens. We, uh, our genus is Homo, and the species is Homo sapiens. So you can see that the last, mm, the last mm, common ancestor from chimpanzees and human beings they separate quite lightly. Son los últimos en separarse. Nuestros parientes más próximos son los chimpancés. Which characteristics do we have? that make us a little bit different from the rest of the primates and we are a different species and genus from the rest of the of the primates the first characteristic is that we are bipeds bipeds mean that we can uh, walk on the lower limbs podemos uh, caminar sobre las dos patas traseras And that's something that uh, the rest of the primates cannot do. They can stand for a while, but they cannot live walking uh, in a vertical position. And to get this characteristic, some transformation in our body are necessary. For example, the feet, we don't have hands. On our legs, we have feet. Also, our uh, pelvis is shorter than, than, the, than the apes. Our spine has a curve, like an S, which is very different than the, this C-shaped 
mm, spying on apes, gorillas, chimpanzees, and so on. And as we are bipeds, our hands are free to grab things um, and to use them as, as hands, right? Como, como podemos caminar las dos patas, eso nos permite tener las manos libres para, para coger objetos y manipularlos. Also, we have longer thumbs to better grip. Here you can see the difference between the chimpanzee hand and the human hand. And as you can see, our thumb is bigger and longer and also closer to the, to the rest of the fingers. And that allows us to uh, touch a uh, all the fingers with the thumb. And that is very useful because we can uh, we can take uh, things with a very precise grip. Con, tiene, nos permite coger cosas de una manera muy precisa and, strong, and very strong at the same time y, y muy fuerte. Uh, and that is uh, very important because thanks to that uh, to that kind of hand we are able to um, build a lot of tools and instruments gracias a esta estructura de la mano nos ha permitido eh, fabricar instrumentos also the, the skull the head is very different from a human being and a chimpanzee Here you can see that the, the mouth is very long in a chimpanzee, but our mouth is smaller. And also the teeth, our teeth are close together, but the chimpanzees and gorillas have some gaps between, between the teeth. Another difference, the spine joins the skull here in the in a lower position because we are bipeds but in gorillas and chimpanzees the spine joins the skull in the back of the skull here you can see the difference in the position and that's because of the bipedism bipedism also you can see some differences our jaws nuestras mandíbulas are smaller than a chimpanzee Also, we have a flat face, um, and they don't have flat face. And our um, the place for the brain is much bigger in a human skull than a chimpanzee. El, el hueco para el cerebro es mucho más grande, más amplio en los seres humanos que en los chimpancés. That is very important because thanks to that um, big brain, we have we are more intelligent. And also, we have developed an articulate speech, which is a way of communication more precise than other types of communication that animals have. Eh, gracias a nuestro cerebro tan grande, pues hemos desarrollado gran inteligencia, eh, memoria, mmm, pensamiento abstracto, lenguaje simbólico y un lenguaje que está articulado y eso nos permite, el hablar con palabras nos permite expresarnos con mucho más detalle de lo que pueden, como pueden comunicarse pues, otros, otros primates Let's see now the last part of the unit which is the importance of vertebrate animals Some vertebrate animals can produce positive or negative effects on humans Let's see some negative effects. For example, a snake can bite us and inject some poison. Or some animals can transmit diseases. So that, that is a risk for human beings. Also, if some vertebrate animals like rabbits or let's see rats, rats and uh, mice, If they reproduce too much, then that can be considered as a plague and they can destroy a lot of crops. Um, pueden destruir cultivos. Si, si se reproducen incontroladamente, pueden considerarse una plaga. But they also have some 
positive effects on human beings. They are benefit, beneficial for human beings. But despite of these uh, effects, all animals, including the vertebrate animals, they play an important role in the ecosystem. They keep the balance in the ecosystems. Vertebrate animals are very sensitive, as we have seen. We have a well-developed, they have a well-developed nervous system, they have sense organs, so therefore they are capable of feeling pain and pleasure. We can read in our book, page number 99, that all animals deserve respect and protection. Todos los animales merecen ser respetados y protegidos. Let's see now some um, benefits that we can obtain from vertebrate animals. Uh, one of the benefits is the protection from harmful insects. Sorry about that. And so they can eat some insects that can produce plaques. So they control the population of some animals, insects, but also some other vertebrate animals. The fox can control, the because it's a predator, it can control the number of rabbits in, a, in an ecosystem. Okay, so that's a good one, to keep the balance in the, num in the population of animals. Another good one, it's uh, the companionship. Most of you have some animals at home and we keep them as pets. Los tenemos animales como mascotas and they gi uh, give us some companion. Also, uh, animals help us working for us. Here you can see some examples. Uh, Donkeys and horses, they can be used as a way of transport and also they can uh, carry heavy things like this pile of bricks. Also some animals, uh, mm, they have like a special job like this dog, this is a rescue dog or a dog to help the blind people. And also some animals are used in agriculture. Now we have uh, another vehicles, but, but in the past and currently in certain areas, some people still use animals uh, to work in farms. Also, one of the most well-known benefits is that we uh, use animals for eating. So we eat meat like fish, pork, rabbit, chicken, also milk and eggs, right? This is a cow farm, this is a like an open range uh, egg farm. Also we use animals for clothing, like for example leather from the cow skin, wool from uh, sheep, feathers from birds or fur uh, from um, fox or rabbit. Another benefit that we obtain for vert from vertebrate animals is the scientific research. Uh, thanks to animal testing, we can uh, see if new products or uh, new medicines uh, are mm, beneficial and they don't harm human beings. Also, they help uh, in the researching for new medicines and medical treatments. So mainly in, for scientific uh, research, we used rabbits and mice, um, but in certain um, circun in some circumstances, uh, scientists use monkeys, dogs, cats, but they need like a special um, permission. So these are very rare cases. The most abundant animals for testing are rabbits and fish also and mice. 
gracias a, al, a los experimentos con animales, se desarrollan nuevos medicamentos y nuevos tratamientos médicos y se prueban todos los cosméticos y nuevos productos que salen al mercado para ver si son beneficiosos y no dañan a las personas. So, before uh, use them with human beings, we um, try the products with animals. And also we obtain some benefits because we use animals for sport and entertainment. For example, here you have a circus, uh, the elephant of a circus, uh, some zoos, also in races like a hound race or a horse race, um, bullfighting and other traditions like, like this. And, uh, and fishing, hunting are considered like sports. So we use animals for sport and entertainment. And finally, um, I think animals are beautiful and uh, we, they inspire us and we want to see them in nature and take photos and we study them and learn from them. We mm, film documentaries about animals because they are interesting for people and that's another benefit that we get from them. So that's the end of the lesson and the end of the unit. I hope you like it and if you have any questions you can ask, you can ask me as always by email or Moodle. And that's all. See you in the next lesson. Bye.